I'm I'm here with Bill Colgrave, who's uh, the candidate and for rejoin EU Hammersmith and Chiswick, um, and 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 lives in Hammersmith, as in, as indeed do my three children and my four grandchildren. So you're entirely local. So when your when your little bike goes past, um, yes. blazoned with uh, rejoin EU flags. So w what's your what's your connection with Europe? Um. Well, no, I'm, I'm a European, apart from anything else. Hmm. We're all Europeans, Tim. Hey, well, I, I, I entirely, agree. I entirely agree. I spent a lot of time in Europe, um, but I, but, but I feel more European now that I'm now that I'm living in the UK. Um, yeah. I, I, I feel that sort of defiance. Um, as uh, now, um, I but think. Thinking, I mean, if you're here, here in Hammersmith is yeah. a pretty remarkable place to be i mean there are we have a constituency of fifty-seven thousand people covering hammersmith chiswick right down to the river a little bit further north um not center of london but center of where or a center of west london and of those fifty-seven thousand people 48 percent this is quite extraordinary were born outside the united kingdom and, and andy slaughter said that one-fifth of the um, of the residents in 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 the area, were belong to the were were born in the EU. Uh, you know, I think that's probably true. Forty eight percent were born yeah. outside outside the um, uh, the United Kingdom. I mean, that is a huge number. It, 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 it's remarkable. And, and what and what about now? Is is it the same number now? Or no, that is that that is the case. That... I'm, I'm, that's the up to date. Oh right! Oh, I'm 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 quoting I'm quoting back in 2016. So you're much more oh, upstate than I am. But I mean, there you go up onto the the Uxbridge Road, and the um, and you've got people from um, every. Um, I think mm. 230 different languages are spoken. Isn't it one? So so when you get people like the 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 Brexit Party, who now choose to call themselves the Reform Party, complaining about Britishness and 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 maintaining uh, <coughs> control over our own affairs without the interference of foreigners <coughs> it does it, it it gets your gut a bit well it, it it's always struck me as very odd that uh, nigel farage complains about hearing hearing people speaking other languages in the street and yet his daughter is fluent in german so presumably she speaks other languages in the street too it's uh, it, it seems it seems very odd, and I I, I like other languages. Anyway, uh, what uh, I I'd, I'd love to know what he what, what he would do in Wales. Um, uh, yes, yes, good point. Yeah, yes, yes, and you know you hear you hear Welsh sometimes. And you think I have no idea where what what you're saying. There's, there's sort of no there's, there's no access to it. Um, no, I think the, the Brexit Party is a sort of throwback. It is. It's very sad. I went to a debate last night in actually in Putney because our Putney constituent. Putney candidate wasn't around, but the um, uh, the the and and you know a man gets up and starts yelling at me about um, about the EU and and uh, where well, you've got your statistics wrong. We're we're losing our sense of identity. Wait a moment. I mean, here, what have we have achieved after eight years? Eight years after the Brexit vote, is there an even sign of any opportunity arising arising from Brexit? And that morning, I had been I had, I had met a friend of mine in the street who's a uh, um, a professor of of some sort of biology. Anyway, he works most of the time for GSK doing GSK doing this um, CAR T cancer cancer research. Yes, where they basically discovered a new way of treating cancer, which he put it to me, will actually solve the problem. We know it. We know it's just a matter of, of going through it. We can already deal with leukemia and we're close to dealing with, with tumours. Um, but he said, Brexit has set us back two years because we can't cooperate with the people who are our associates in other parts of the world. Yeah. We can't cooperate them with, with them because each process that we do has to go through an additional uh, re uh, an additional approval process. So we can't just use an EU approval that's been done by one of 27 other countries and add it in and it gets ticked off. We have to go and do it ourselves. Hmm. We've lost, he said, we had six, uh, scientists from 65 countries working here in 2020. It's now down to 32. 
Yes, it's uh, oh. it's a it, it's a great shame. It's it's holding us back. Bother about whether they can have me a blue or red passport. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now look, the, um, you've got uh, you've got a series of candidates you're facing. Uh, the, the one I suppose to to look out for is Andy Slaughter, but uh, Andy Slaughter is a Remainer, isn't he? He will he he will win. Um, he may be a Remainer. I sat next to him at a, at a debate three days ago. He never said he was a Remainer. I sat next to... Well, he's, he's been a bit coy about it since, uh, since 2019. Well, I, sat, I, mean, I sat next to Fleur Anderson, who's the Labour member for Wandsworth and Putney last night, um, and went through the whole, the whole debate, and she did not say so. However, at the end of the debate, she came up to me and she said, I agreed with every single word you said. I said, for God's sake, tell you've got 500 people listening to you. Tell them that. Absolutely. Well, I... Most Labour MPs, I would say, are, are, are not Remainers, but get us back in, in us. Yes, 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 yes. I, 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 think, I, th I think so. Um, uh, Andy Slaughter said that... Uh, um, that the, the vote for Brexit would cost. Uh, so you go back to 2019. He said a vote for Brexit, or 2018. He said a vote for Brexit would cost 70 billion pounds over 10 years. Well, he's wrong. It's cost. It co it's at the moment costing 100 billion in output every year. Every year. 100 so. billion. The output, though, Tim. Out output is different from from income. Yes. Uh, but it's it, it's a it's a huge number. So by rejoining the EU, would we would would we get back all that? Would we would we would we be or, or, or would no. we be yeah? No, we're not going to get back. We, we can't get back what's been lost. Yeah. Um, but we can get ourselves back on a back on an even on an track. even keel. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. We can start recovering. I've got in front of me. Um, I don't know if I can't show it to you. Oh, maybe I can. Um, there's a there's a graph. Well, this thing I'm looking at right now shows what we call what what they call the divergence between EU and UK growth mm -hmm. since 2016, and it's running absolutely level 2016 to 2018, and then the divergence starts. It's yeah. messed up a bit by COVID, which of course sees a big dip in in 2020, but we're now on a not on a gap which has started at uh, two percent in 2018 and is now looking at with a moment 14 percent that's phenomenal do, do, do you think london broadly is is a is an area that would respond well to a campaign to rejoin the eu oh yeah oh yes absolutely i do um tim i wandered around um uh, hammersmith um, um, two days ago with um, my uh, my co-canvassing uh, partner, Dan the Plumber, who contacted me saying, he said, I'm Dan the Plumber, I want to help you build. Delightful bloke. And um, we stood outside Hammersmith Underground Station. 50% of people said, bugger off, um, or uh, we, don't, oh, we don't want anything, or, or another 25% said, sorry, we are um, we are foreigners anyway, but we give strong support and almost all the rest said yes you're quite right yes but it but but even but, but it's turning that agreement into practical support isn't it oh yeah yeah there's so, no we're oh. not going to get more than five if we get more than five percent more than one in 20 we i'd be thrilled mm -hmm. because it's difficult for a one issue party very difficult we've got to do something the election's been declared and these parties are not doing anything about it um and we looked up um on the on, on the internet who on earth is is pro rejoining and i came across this this party mm -hmm. rejoin the rejoin the eu party so i called them up and said i will i want to be part of you and i will stand in kensington which is what i thought i was it turned out i wasn't <laughs> I'm so sorry, but but it's it, Hammersmith is a good. Hammersmith no, they've got someone is. in Kensington anyway. They've got a guy called Stevens in Kensington. Oh yes, I've spoken to him. <laughs> he's very entertaining. He's very solid, and he oh, used good. to be an MEP, so he knows what he's talking about. Oh yes, there are a few other MEPs you know. around. Um, but yeah. do you, so uh, over over the course of this is a long 
a long process, isn't it? The uh, rejoin EU is really where UKIP was about uh, 2010. And, or, or, oh, or even no, no, Brendan, Brendan said that to me, that it was, um, that he said that, 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 that he had more candidates than UKIP first had, yes. Yeah. Yes, it, that, that, that's true. I think, you, I think uh, Rejoin EU has got 26 candidates. I think so, yeah. And well, presumably, so, Tim, if, 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 if we get a good enough vote, uh, in effect, we're doing ourselves out of business, which is good news for all of us. Um, in, in what way? Well, because then one of the main parties will we'll pick up. They've, they've got to take the thing on, in which case there's no reason for us anymore. Well, absolutely. I, but I, I, <laughs> um, may, maybe Farage had the same had the same conversation, but Farage, Farage uh, probably wouldn't want to be sidelined by any other main party. Yeah, but, but, oh, but what, what are his? What are the policies that of his that? Uh, that anybody else might take over and therefore sideline him. I don't know well, if he's got any policy. There is only one policy, which is Farage. And oh. uh, I think Farage would very much like to be taken over by a main party. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Well, I, I, that's a fair point. I didn't know anything really about <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it's worrying because the, 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 the key to this election has to be cost of living. Because if people are frustrated, then... Then, then, then they turn to, to people who are whipping up uh, frustration and whipping up tension, like Mr. Farage, like um, reform, and, um, and and Farage seems seems to be a receptacle for frustration. I think, yeah, I think they're all talking about cost of living. Of course, cost of living that uh, differential between the EU and the and the, and the UK is covered. That is where the cost of living increase. Comes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, on your on your bicycle, um, yes. uh, riding riding through um, Hammersmith and Chiswick, uh, when, when when people see you, they should cheer and wave at you, and ideally vote. Do you have any other branding on your bicycle? Um. What? No. What's the color? No. What's the color? I think, oh. I think the bicycle will be. Um, uh, and with, uh, what we'll have, I think, is two great big, what they call feather flags, Tim. Oh, yes. Things that advertise ice creams on the beach. Very and, good. And it'll say, vote, rejoin EU in 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 good Ukrainian colours. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, do, do, do you have any comments about Ukraine, by the way? Should, no, Ukraine, really. should, Ukraine, Ukraine, should Ukraine be part of Europe? Well, that is a, it's a difficult question. I mean, in my view, and um, t as um, and you as a sort of a, a fellow interest in in history, if you take if you go three hundred years ahead, people will look historians will look back um, at the European Union as um, as a rather evil institute. Well, an institution which was. Uh, substantially against the interest of a very large number of people because it's basically creating a, a sort of monopoly within the 27 countries, which is greatly to the disadvantage of those countries that, that, that are not within it. And we see the, the damage that it, it, it yes. causes agriculturally to Africa, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, otherwise, why, you know, if, if that wasn't the case, um, we wouldn't find um, hundreds of thousands of people trying to cross the seas to get into Europe. It is, in its way, a sort of a sort of monopoly, and it's going. To, there will be a time when we come when we have to say this is this is wrong. This is damaging to a large portion of the population. Is but that is that, that's a longer term view. Hmm. Um, right now, um, I um, I'm, I want Britain to be back in Europe because I, I for, first. First of all, because economically it makes a good, good bit of sense. Secondly, because I'm more an internationalist than a nationalist, and I think that um, that borders are things that are there for taxis and little else. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and uh, do you think um, so? In in the long term, maybe Europe is not necessarily the the best thing, but or maybe more integration is the best thing. Uh, uh, External right. integration. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't so, know how I don't know how we solve 
we solve. They're, they're but this sort, this sort of individualism, this national, this this um this nationalist flag waving is is not necessarily a useful thing at the moment. No, 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 it is not. It is not. I mean, we, we let's bear in mind. I mean, how long has nationalism existed? Nationalism took over from from uh, die from feudal no, not feudalism, but um from dy dynasties. Yes, about two hundred and fifty years ago. You know, yes, yes, yes around the time of Burke and Robespierre. So, yeah. um, uh, and and since then, it's, it, it, no, nobody really talked about Britain and Britain's influence in the world in in the 1780s. Uh, they talked about empire. Yes, yes, uh, yes. So, so nationalism is, a, is relatively recent as a, uh, uh, and, and it hasn't done any, and done us a huge amount of good. It's not, why should we be competing because we're not Hungarian or not Slovakian or not Spanish or whatever? The one that I think what would do a, a huge amount of good for the European Union would be if the commissioners and the president and the, uh, <clears throat> and the executive was actually elected rather Absolutely. than appointed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it's very, very difficult to make that happen. I've, yeah. I've had discussions about that for 25 years with with also with the with Europe with UK politicians and of course yeah. they say well you know you've got to persuade us the leaders to give up part of our power to another to 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 a superior uh to to, to an executive which arguably has much greater powers than we do and has the legitimacy of of, of democracy yes yes I but you know Europe is not ideal but it is it is about as good as we get at the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Well, look, um, I, I wish you very, very much success on the on the fourth. 